Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our venerable apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and blessings to the Lord's elect, the house of David. All right, so Brother Aharon, coming back at you with a, with a quick lesson. Low willing to be edifying and uplifting unto the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, and um, I'm going to title this When Society Falls, dot, 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 Directive 51 and FEMA death camps, okay? And um, this is inspired from uh, something I was actually doing a little research on, okay? Uh, I believe this was yesterday. And uh, Lord willing, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, do a little lesson on that as well, okay? But, um, you know, going into the times that, you know, we're, we're, we're entering into, okay? I just felt through the spirit, I'll just share some of this information that I've came across, all right, with um, your brothers and sisters out there, all right, now, you know, this is going to highlight more of, you know, these um, so-called FEMA camps, okay, aka concentration camps, otherwise known as um, re-education centers, okay? Now, we understand through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai that these things that, you know, we're, we're talking about here are not so-called uh, conspiracy theories, but actually facts, okay? These are things that, you know, the, 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 the wicked, all right, of Esau Edom, all right, is planning to uh, unveil upon the face of the earth, okay, to fulfill the prophecy of him being, all right, the son of perdition, okay? And a lot of people are going to, you know, quickly realize that, damn, everything that these men were saying was, was true, okay? It wasn't any conspiracy theories, it was just facts, just to warn you, all right, uh, pertaining to Ezekiel 3 and 17, all right? The Heavenly Father said that he sent Ezekiel, all right, which... We are in the stead of Ezekiel today because Ezekiel is a prophet. Okay, and the Heavenly Father sends his prophets out there. It tells you that in the book of Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, all right, that he sent out his prophets, all right, rising up beat times. Okay, so in the, in the stead of Ezekiel, we're, we're, we're been sent, all right, by the Heavenly Father to give warning onto the nation of Israel. As a matter of fact, let's open up with that, and then we're going to flow from there. Okay, um, this is the book of uh, Ezekiel. Chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Okay, and what we're about to read here is all about warning. 
Okay, you got a lot of distraction going on, but understand that those distractions are there to sift out uh, the non-elect who might have heard this word and might have been paying attention. But as Yahweh Shai said, the, the word goes out, and you got people that that you know uh, it fall. Some some the word falls on uh, some falls on stony ground, all right, and so on and so forth. And some people they they basically they receive the word, okay, but then uh, affliction comes and trouble comes and then you know they throw the word out the window okay so that trouble that 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 troublous times is coming but these distractions is is weakening those who are not of the elect so when the troubles come they're gonna lose it okay but in the meantime the elect is paying attention okay the non-elect are, are, are gonna be sifted out but the elect are paying attention all right so without further ado Let's get right into this. It says, FEMA death camps sheds light on a chilling reality. The existence of 1,000 concentration camps, a modern day inferno where the innocent are trapped on the road to hell with nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Okay, now when you look up that word inferno, let's just see what it says, right? <laughs> uh, it says hell. The infernal, re infernal regions. Okay, now we know hell is just talking about the grave, right? It's not a, a place that you you burn forever. Okay. Um, it says the lower world, the otherwise known as the underworld, like they say. Um, and the lower world is where you bury people. Okay, they call it six feet under. All right, it says a large raging fire. Okay, and that's where you have uh, Gehenna. All right, it was, a, it, was a, it was an incinerator, basically, okay? And Yahweh Shai even made reference to that, all right? Um, so let's go back to uh, the article. Okay, so it says, Modern day inferno where the innocent are trapped on the road to hell with nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. So that's proverbial for what's about to happen to, here, to people here in America, Babylon the Great. It's going to feel like hell, okay? If you don't think America is already hell, then very soon you're going to really see it because with all these demons out here, come on. All right. A lot more demons <laughs> than angels. Okay. Anyway, let's read. It says, imagine a world where freedom is a distant memory into your memory, right? Replaced by the iron grip of oppression. This is the reality faced by thousands hidden in plain sight under the guise of, quote, emergency management, end quote. But make no mistake, these are not havens of safety, right? Uh, the Apostle Paul says, what? Well, when they shall say peace and safety, right? Was that in um, 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, right? When they shall say peace and safety, then what? Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman which, uh, as, a, as a woman that travaileth, and what? And they shall not escape, okay? It says what? These are not havens of safety. They are chambers of despair, meticulously designed to strip away humanity. And those who are going to end up in here, most most of the people who are going to end up in here are going to be put to death. Okay, it says at the at the heart of this malevolent scheme lies the Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA, an organization entrusted with protecting citizens in times of crisis. Yet beneath the facade or its facade of benevolence lies a web of deception with each camp serving as a cog in the machinery machinery of tyranny. From coast to coast, these facilities stand as monuments to governmental overreach, casting a shadow of fear over the land. For those unfortunate enough to find themselves within the confines of these camps, escape is but a distant dream. Surrounded by barbed wire and armed guards, they are prisoners of a system intent on extinguishing hope okay families torn apart individuals stripped of their dignity this is the grim reality of life within the walls of a fema death camp uh, it says though the road ahead may seem bleak there's still hope amidst the darkness through awareness and action we can shine a light on the darkest corners of, of, of society exposing okay so see the, again um the news here is 
for those who still think that you know there's some form of slither of hope right that oh you know if we if we're able to bind together th there there is no hope for america okay if you're here in america you think you're gonna go back to the good old days of you know gas being cheap and food being cheap and people just eating as much as they can or want you go to the grocery store and you buy uh you're doing groceries right wholesale grocery shopping and you coming home with two carts filled with soda and chips and all kinds of crazy shit and for man cheap less than a hundred dollars see all those days where americans are just living freely summertime kids are out people are out women are out men are out everyone is out all right sitting in the corner somewhere opening the uh the damn um fire extinguishers and shit the fire hydrants i should say right and letting that water flow and they playing music and kids are running around and nobody's sleeping and they just making noise all night fireworks every night during the summertime this these the summer nowadays it doesn't feel like what it used to be back then see so that's a clear indication all right that this place is not a hey, hey, let's get that let's get that all right be healed let's see All right, um, let me just go to it. See, so these, these things that you're seeing around, um, let me see something so I can. All right, there's a book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 9. This is exactly, all right, what, what, what I just described as in, the things that are happening here are not what it used to be. All right, things are not what it used to be, and it's not going to get better. No matter who you have in president, uh, as president, or whatever the case may be, all right, America, America's downfall will not be stopped. Okay, it it will not be stopped. It's going to continue on and on and on until it hits the average American physically in the face. Okay, in the middle of the night when they grab you up and they send you into these 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 camps. All right. Is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 9. It says, We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. Okay? So America's chances of survival is is is, is zero, nil, zilch, nada, nothing. It ain't, ain't nothing available. You, you're just done. Okay? You're done. It's over with. And that means that it's going to affect the American people. Okay? And what's going to happen as a result? civil war okay civil war man it says for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies okay so that time is coming and of course when there's chaos what needs to happen order okay order happens that's why they have uh, uh the the phrase ordo ab chaos which is latin for order out of chaos okay and who's behind and orchestrating all the chaos the same people who are going to come around and give the order. Okay? It's just it's a funny little cycle that they play. It's all psychological mind games. Okay? And the people keep falling for it every single time. All right? Now, you have over a thousand uh, 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 camps across the United States. Right? If you say 50 or 51 states, that's an average of about 20, uh, yeah, 20, 20 states, uh, 20 camps per state. That's a lot, man. <laughs> you know? Anyway, let's read. It says, For years, people believed that FEMA was a benign agency tasked with aiding citizens during national disasters. But behind its seemingly harmless facade, it is gearing up to become the executive arm of a new police state. Okay? And within that police state, you're going to see a lot of things, including all right, the mandatory implementation of the MOTB to fulfill biblical prophecy. Okay, that's where the penalty of, of death, if you don't take it, comes comes into play in the time of police state. Okay? And there's going to be absolute savagery that you're going to be seeing out here because scriptures tell you that they shall be like madmen sparing none. Okay? It says the very fabric of America's constitution is at risk. Okay, and it's been at risk. It, it, in reality, the American constitution doesn't even exist. Okay? Okay? 
if you really want to be honest it doesn't exist because if it did then the whole cv mandates and all that wouldn't have happened okay so there you have it it says many may not be aware of the presidential executive orders a public document listed on the federal register these orders subtly or sub subtly right that's 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 esau's um mo he was more subtle uh subtile all right than all the beasts of the earth okay he he's still the same all right out of all the beasts which is these other nations okay he's the most subtile okay drafted and signed form the of uh, uh, drafted and signed form the legal framework for what might be a massive operation involving fema okay it says uh the key the key question is why would fema be associated with executive orders that can potentially suspend the constitution and the bill of rights the very documents that form the foundation of our nation's liberty and individual freedoms are under threat now you wait till the the who that <laughs> see we're gonna keep mentioning them because they, they they're not slick all right and, and 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 we're not ignorant to to satan's devices okay so we know that esau is going to use a who that in the name of a, a global um health emergency right like like the one that bill gates uh uh auntie gates and uh uncle melinda was laughing at all right, a few years ago talking about or oh, the next one will get their attention <laughs> you know yeah that one when it comes the so-called disease x all right the so-called the big one right the so-called the one that's going uh change the course of history forever type you know when that one happens okay you're gonna see uh, uh um you're gonna see fema all right uh step up to the plate okay step up to the plate and start bringing in all kinds of different uh, measures okay so it says uh Uh, it says FEMA's power is not just in its executive backing, but in its infrastructure. All right. It says um, a, com a commonality between these camps are they are all equipped with railroad facilities. The presence of railroad harks back to uh, railroads harks back to older times where mass transportation of people in times of war or unrest was necessary. Each camp also has well-constructed roads for easy access, and many are conveniently located near airports. Most of these camps are capable of housing up to 20,000 prisoners. Okay, 20,000 prisoners. Consider the magnitude of such a number. All right, if you look at a, like, a, like a, a baseball stadium and you got 20,000 people sitting in one place, man, that's a lot of people. Okay, a lot of these concerts they get 20,000, 30,000 people going up there, and it's like a whole bunch of people. We're like ants when you zoom out. See? And 20,000 can, one camp can hold up to 20,000. That's, that's, that's crazy. Because if these camps are filled to capacity, we're looking at potentially millions of American citizens detained. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. It says the Alaskan behemoth, it says the most alarming of these facilities sits just outside of fairbanks alaska masked as a massive mental health facility its size is truly daunting this alaskan facility can accommodate approximately two million people two million yes you read that correctly two million it says what event what catastrophe would require such a vast facility well there's something known as um directive 51 okay now directive 51 if i'm not if i'm if i'm if i'm not mistaken as a matter of fact let me let me pull that up real quick okay because we mentioned something about what catastrophe could require such a vast facility right so let's read a little bit about something known as directive 51 okay it says the national security and homeland security presidential directive signed by president of the united states george w bush on may 4th 2007 is a presidential directive establishing a comprehensive policy on the federal government structures 
and operations in the event of a catastrophic emergency. Okay? Such an emergency is defined as, quote, any incident, regardless of location, that results in extraordinary levels of mass casualties, damage, or disruption severely affecting the U.S. population. Okay? So, the shit that happened with CrowdStrike, if it was a little bit more intensified, meaning like, all right, let's go for it this time for real. So that means that it's not just like a day, oh, it's, it's back up. But something actually happens where they can't even find out what happened. Everything is down. Kind of like a, like a, kind of like a cyber attack that Klaus Schwab was talking about. If that was to happen, that would be considered a catastrophic emergency. And hence, the American uh, National Security and Homeland Security Presidential Directive kicks in, otherwise known as Directive 51. Okay, now let's read a little bit about what that does. Okay. It says, such an emergency is defined as any incident, regardless of location, that results in extraordinary levels of mass casualties, right? A cyber attack would, would cause mass casualties off the off rip. Okay, think of all the people who are in, in, in so-called hospitals right now who live on tubes being plugged onto them. All right, which is connected to electricity. If that thing shuts down, it's over with. And that's millions of people right there. Okay. Just the, the, the hospital system alone. Okay. Hmm. It says damage or disruption severely affecting the U.S. population, infrastructure, environment, uh, environment, economy, or government functions. The unclassified portion of this directive was posted on the White House website on May 9th, blah, blah. Without any further announcement, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. Okay, so now we understand that there's something known as the Directive 51, which basically kicks into gear, all right? That's where FEMA comes in, all right? That cat catastrophe, whatever catastrophe hits this place, all right, it's going to open the door for FEMA to come in, okay? And, and some of the things that FEMA will have control over, okay, are... Uh, written here in these executive orders, we go. We always go into these uh, FEMA executive orders. We're gonna go over it today, real quick. Okay. It says uh, executive orders associated with FEMA that would suspend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. See. <laughs> so no more. Hey, hey, hey. That's it's coming. Let's read. It says these executive orders have been on record for nearly 30 years and could be enacted by the stroke of a presidential pen. Executive Order 10990 says allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Okay, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. That right there is already in an executive order. <laughs> okay, the Executive Order 10995 says allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Okay, so no more, oh, you know, uh, 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 and communication media is really, all right, these social media platforms. Okay, that's become the pretty much the biggest communication media uh, there is. All right, social media platforms is where a lot of communication is happening. YouTube and so on and so forth, right? It says, uh, Executive Order 10997, it says, allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Hmm, interesting. Executive Order 10998 says, allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, Okay, because a lot of people uh, um, have cars, but they don't own these cars. Okay, once you register a car, you're pretty much giving it away. Okay, back to the state, but there's something known as uh, the Elodio. Okay, mm -hmm. something I've also, I've also been looking into. Okay, uh, Elodio title. Okay, and that's basically um, a title that says that you own something outright. Hence, um, you, you, you don't answer to anyone. No authority can basically take that thing away from you okay but that's that's another topic for another day okay it says uh including personal cars trucks or vehicles of any kind and total control over over all highways seaports and waterways no wonder they're making they're doing all these roads now okay because they know when catastrophe or something hits a lot of people are going to be on these highways and roads and that's where you're going to have these 
checkpoints. Okay. These military dudes stopping people, asking for documentation. Are you up to date on your so-called Vanessa? All right. Do you have your MC hip soon? All right. It's all, it's all, it's all coming. Okay. It's going to happen quick. It's going to happen quick. All right. It's like a, it says executive order 10999 allows the government to take over all food resources and, and farms. Mm. Executive order uh, 11. It's like, uh, yep. 11 000 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Mm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, Esau, bro. Let's see. Okay, it says uh, executive order, executive order eleven zero zero one allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive order eleven zero zero two uh, designates designates the postmaster general to operate a national registration of all persons. Hmm. Digital ID. Okay. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. It, it applies to flying too. You know, not being able to take flights and so on and so forth. Being, being stuck at an airport, you know, trying to go someplace, but you can't. Being on the road somewhere, trying to go somewhere, but you can't. It's all jam, traffic jams, you know. Like um, the scene in uh, Leave the World Behind, where they were driving, trying to go someplace, and then it's like, damn, a whole but a pile of Teslas. So now they have to stop and start swerving and then back up, and you know, hey, that, that type of scenario is going to be happening soon, too. It's going to be happening too. It says Executive Order eleven zero zero four allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities. Mm. Right. So you might be living in a certain neighborhood and they'll just come in and, and round you up and say well, you're being relocated. And where are you going to be re being lo relocated to? Mm hmm. Guessed it. It says build new housing with public funds, <laughs> designate areas to be abandoned and establish new locations for populations. That's exactly what that means. Them, them camps. Okay. Establish new locations for populations. All right. Um, Executive Order 1105 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage f facilities. Hmm. And it goes on and on. There's a whole lot of executive orders. All right. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, but you, you get the point. Okay, but you get the point. Okay. Let me see something here. This is very interesting. This one right here, I like a lot, right? Executive Order 11921 says, allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency, which I will assume will be the FIPA, FEPA, FEPA agency, all right, the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency. Federal, Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency. Hell, <laughs> so, bro. Uh, to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in U.S. financial institution in any undefined national emergency. You hear that? So FEMA will have control over f people's finances and so on and so forth due to that executive order 11921. So the federal government through FEMA will have control over your finances, everything, your credit, your salary, your wages. Okay, what you can and cannot use to have energy in your house, for example, if you're using, uh, let's just say you're using a generator, say, oh, no, that's producing too much uh, carbon, so you're going to have to go green or cut it out. <laughs> you know, you're going to start seeing a lot of that, a lot of that. But anyway, let's keep going. It says, it also provides... That when a state of emergency is declared by the president, Congress cannot review the action for six months. Yep. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has broad powers in every aspect of the nation. General Frank Salzito, chief of FEMA's Civil Security Division, stated in a 1983 conference that he saw FEMA's role as a, quote, 
new frontier in the protection of individual and governmental leaders from assassination, and of civil and military installations. You hear that? And of military and and of civil and military installations from sabotage and or attack as well as prevention of dissident groups from gaining access to U.S. opinion or a global audience in times of crisis. Okay? Dissident. When you go into that word dissident, all right, I believe it's a compound word where the dis means a part and the sident goes to the Latin word, I believe, uh, sedire, which means to sit. So basically to sit apart. Okay? To be on two sides of the spectrum. So they're saying one thing, but yet we bring another truth and ex explain it and say, hey, this is what this, this is actually happening here. Pay attention to this instead of that. All right? So they're, they, they're saying that <laughs> they're going to be using FEMA. Okay? One of their roles is to come against groups uh, from gaining access to U.S. opinion. Meaning what? Uh, uh, social media uh, platforms. Okay? Communication platforms. They're going to seize all that. You're going to see the famine of the word. Right, all these things are going to be happening. Okay, it says or a global audience in 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 time of crisis because in a time of crisis, people want to know the truth. What the hell is actually going on? See, and they want to be the ones to be having uh, the ability to control the narrative because if you control the narrative, you control the minds. Okay, and then you can control the direction in which the minds are going into. See, but when when the minds are being told the truth in the midst of lies, and they actually realize the truth. Then, then your, your whole decept your deceptive ways become exposed and there goes your power. See? So they need to do everything in their power right, to violently stop the men of the Lord. Hence, Revelation 12 and 12. Okay? There's no joke, man. This is that ass no joke. Okay? What we're doing is, is very, very powerful, man. They're extremely, extremely powerful. All right? And they have us... Uh, on, a, on a list, something known as a uh, main core. Okay, main core, all right, uh, um, is, is, is an American uh, government database which has information on basically those who they believe to be threats to so called national security. Okay, so when when <laughs> when the CIA, FBI, and all of them, you know, start coming out, visiting brothers and you know, sending agents and all that, it's because we're on their main core uh, database. Okay, that means they, they look at us as high-level high threats. High-level threats to the New World Order agenda because we come out and we boldly right, proclaim all right, the next kingdom to come and how short-lived right, their kingdom is and, and how the Lord is going to destroy this place. Okay? And they know it to be true. That's why they, they, they're afraid and they start to look at what we're saying as hate so we can stop talking. Okay, so the main core data comes from the NSA, FBI, CIA. So they've been tracking us and other sources and is collected and stored without warrants or court orders. The database's name derives from the fact that it contains copies of the main core or essence of which items of intelligence information on Americans produced by the FBI and other agencies of the U.S. intelligence community. As of 2008, there are 8 million Americans listed in the database and possible uh, as possible threats. 8 million. Shit, I wonder what that number is now. So often for trivial, tr for trivial reasons, whom the government may choose to track, question, or detain in a time of crisis. See? Whom the government will what may choose to track question or detain in a time of crisis okay did we not read that earlier in revelation 2 okay let's go back to that all right the book of revelation chapter 2 and verse 10 it says fear none of those fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison okay let's read that again okay um where is it I lost, I lost what I was reading. Right there. All right. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, right? That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay. 
So when you go back to it, it says dissident groups from oh no, we read that. I'm slacking when I can't find the thing. There, that just threw me off my whole game. Hold up. Wow. It'll come back. It'll come back. Main core. There you go. There you go. Wadi Abash Mel Shah. Alright, it says um going back to your reading, it says as of 2008, there are eight million Americans listed in the database as possible threats, often for trivial reasons, whom the government may choose to track, question, right? Being tried, being on trial, question, or detained, casting some of you into prison, all right, in a time of crisis. So what, for 10 days, for, for, for a time, you know, 10 represents a, a perfect time or a certain amount of time or days, right? So it says in a time of crisis, okay? So FEMA is going to be taking care of all that, all right? They, they're going to be taking care of all that. And they got a list of, basically, like I said, all the states... In the, in, in the United States have multiple, up to at least, uh, an average of at least 20, all right? An average of at least 20, okay? And that's a lot, okay? New York, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, every state has at least 20 uh, uh, FEMA camps ready to go, all right? And that time is coming, all right? And they're saying that their first step all right, of action is to disarm all the Americans, all right, through these uh, phony uh, so-called uh, false flag attacks with these guns, all right, the, the AR-15 and the AR-15 and the AR, same shit every time, okay? It's like people just keep on using the same type of weapon for the same type of crimes and nothing happens. Ain't no examples made out of, like, they keep on happening. They going around shooting in schools and shit. It's like the same shit every time. All right. That's how you know it's what it's orchestrated because they know it works. Crisis actors all the time. I mean, damn, bro. OK. But they want to come after all Americans who have guns. All right. And throw anyone that is or, or they might see as a threat into them camps. OK. Into them camps. All right. And hey, they could go in many different ways. They could say, oh, you know, you might. You might be a health threat to society, so you might you must be isolated, isolated, you know, or whatever the case may be. But we're gonna see how it all plays out. Okay, we're gonna see how it all plays out. All right, let's get this quick precept here, and then we're gonna close it out. All right, this is the book of uh, Second Ezra, chapter sixteen. Let's start off at verse uh, sixty-eight. It says, "For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you." And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. Okay, so they, they shall take certain of you. Not all of us, but some of us are going to be taken. Okay, and we're going to go through those, uh, the hour of temptation. You know, sometimes it's going to be literally in our face. You know, if, you, if they sit you down and say, you're going to take this see hip or what? You're going, you're going to accept it or what? You know? <laughs> um... So continue, it says, um, uh, And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and, and reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place. And remember, you're going you're gonna to consent unto them, right, by complying. And thinking that be, maybe you complying is the right thing to do. But guess what? Compliance is the best thing that they ever wish for. Because you're leading right into your own slavery. Okay. Where <laughs> it's going to be hell. No freedoms, no happiness, nothing. No communication. Right? 1984 in, 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 in real time. You know, men and women are separated. They're fighting each other. Like, there's different shit going on. Like, weirdo shit happening. See? And you're going to be caught up in there. You know, when the military's coming in and Stomping people out, and shooting people in the head, grabbing people, tossing them around, you know, grabbing you by the hair, dragging you in the middle of the night off your bed, like mad loud and aggressive, shining eye, uh, lights in your eyes and shit, mad cold, you know, it's going to be miserable times, man, trotting underfoot. It says, it says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. 
they're going to be using their military and so on and so forth to come up against those that fear the Lord. Okay, because it starts off with a dehumanization where they set it up where society, you know, turns upon those, turns against those who fear the Lord. Our ways of living becomes repugnant, okay, to, to them and adverse to how they live. You see how satanic people again now, the ways of Yahweh Bashmi Shai becomes very adverse, okay? It has an adverse reaction to them. Okay, or at least they have an adverse reaction to the word. See? So then they start doing this crybaby shit. Oh, this is anti Semitic. Oh, you know, this is hate. Oh, we need to stop online hate. No, we're telling the truth. And truth and facts is not hate. All right? It's not hate. Okay? But it says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Okay? For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Okay? So, hey, what we're going to do in those days is going to show, all right, uh, that we are indeed those chosen of Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, not just called. Okay, but yeah, I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Um, just a heads up of uh, what's what's going on. You know, who knows what's going to be happening? When is this going to kick in? Is it going to be at the end of this year? Is it going to be into twenty twenty five? Who knows? All right, but we definitely know that the times of darkness is ahead. We've seen all these other signs. I have prophecy around the world happening. We know that, yeah, we're at the end of this thing. All right. So anyway, in closing, I'd like to give all praise, this honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashom, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashom, 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 Ba'